I honestly did not mind the uh, the shot. I barely even noticed they did it to me, to be perfectly honest. My arm hurt for like a day after. Mine like I didn't. had a real sore arm. Mine didn't. I didn't have I didn't really notice it. And they made me sit. I had to sit for 30 minutes instead of 15 because I'm allergic to lidocaine, which is not in the shot, but because it's an injectable medication, they're just like, you're just going to have to sit for half an hour instead of 15 minutes just to make sure you don't die. Just like extra caution. They didn't even make me sit. They're just like, hey, oh, really? you know, just being nice. the lady whose job it was to go around and check with everybody, make sure they were OK, tell them what the deal was like. They were really well organized. Well, to be fair, I got my shot at Walmart. <laughs> always low prices always <laughs> so, yeah it's it's uh <laughs> i'm going back there too for the second one also what is that little band weird bandage that i've never seen before they've been given that little circle bandage with like the clear oh. window in the center what the fuck is that thing i just got a regular old band-aid it's like it's like a special I don't know what they're giving you down in south carolina it's like this special little circle band aid that's like made to. to I, I guess it's 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 in case it's like the the the, the water wings of band aids in case they night the shot. This is, you haven't seen this. It's weird. No, I just got a plain old band aid. Where'd you go? Your doctor? No, there was um. The state is running vaccination clinics all over the place, ah. and they did one at like a community center. Ah, okay. So I was in a big gymnasium with Martin Luther King's face on the wall because it's the Martin Luther King Community Center in Denver. Yeah, yeah I got that bandage. So I got my flu shot there. It's some weird thing. What the night is it? What is that circled? In? It's, it's just weird. It's like it's like okay, they put it on. They give you the shot through it. Oh. And then you're done. Huh? So it's like, yeah, it's like, tra- it's like training wheels for the dude giving you the shot. They don't have to, d- to think about Weird. it that much. Like peeing yeah. through the Cheerios. <laughs> what? You don't know. Oh, you, my, I, I have, I have nephews. And apparently one of the new tricks for teaching little boys to aim when they start to stand up to pee is you float Cheerios in the toilet and tell them to aim, try and shoot the Cheerios. Let's get to the nonsense. Cause there is an abundance as always. It's never, never not an abundance. We are, we are job security motherfucker. Each week. Catherine radio dead air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Um, we're gonna start off with the with it's Florida, and it's why. It, it's a whole lot of why. Um, let's just jump right into it. Dang, no half measures here on this dude. Send me the story here. It's the name of a really good ice cream shop in Denver. Dang. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Um. Man crashes stolen cocoa police car, runs away, steals second police car. Cocoa, Florida. Man was arrested in Volusia, Volusia County on Thursday after deputies say he stole two cocoa police cars and then led authorities on a multi county chase. You, you might almost say he was cuckoo for cocoa. Um, <laughs> Officials say it started when Coco police were called to check out a report of a suspicious person on I-95. During the investigation, the person, deputies later identified as Xavier, uh, Xavier Yevern Cummings. I think I'm saying that right. Yevern. It starts with a J. So, um, managed to get into a marked patrol car and took off. Lucy County Sheriff Mike Chipwood said that officers in Coco tried a pit maneuver, which sent the car into a wooded area. Officers tried to get Cummings out of the car, but he said he was unable to run away. He said he was able to run away and jump into a second police car that was running and unlocked. Okay, here's the, the thing. After the first one. Yeah. You'd think maybe someone would go, wait a second, guys. Gotta be a little more careful. Remember what happened five minutes ago with this dude? 
Like how, how, how like, oh, he's, well, he wouldn't possibly do that again. Oh God, he did it again. I mean, who would do that twice? This guy. This guy. Uh, Cummings drove north on I-95 with multiple agencies giving chase across into Volusia County. Authorities used stop stick to bring the chase to an end. Chase led to a brief closure on northbound 995. Cummings faces a slew of charges, including armed burglary of a conveyance, escape, fleeing or attempting to elude law enforcement, two counts of possessions of a firearm by a convicted felon, two counts of grand theft firearm, two counts of grand theft motor vehicle, and driving while license suspended. See, because they left the, the guns in the car, that it's not, he was in possession of a firearm. Oh, that feels a little pedantic to me. That feels like they're they're trying to cover their ass because he pissed them off. Yeah, like that feels like piling on just a little bit. Yep. Um, just a little because, well, he made them look a fucking fool, like steal yeah. my car once. Shame on me or shame on you. Steal my car twice. Won't get stolen again. Um, <laughs> God damn! And I do love the fact that the only car harmed here were two cop cars. They had to pit maneuver and stop strips one, and then stop sticks the other one. So cool! I mean, cool. I'm fine with that. I'm I'm perfectly acceptable with that. I didn't know there was a Coco, Florida. There is. There's a Coco, Florida. <laughs> I just, I, what, what the fuck? Okay, why? Like, where were you trying to go? What was your, what were your plans for the day? Just, just a nice leisurely drive on I-95 at high speeds in the stolen in a, police car. In a cop car. Yeah, I... The minute you've stolen a cop cop car, you're kind of done. Yeah. His cops are a little like bees. If you swat at them, they get mad. Even if, even if they have to kill themselves to do it, they will hurt <laughs> you. They will hurt you. Actually, maybe they're a bit more like wasps. No, yeah, well, yeah, they are kind of like kind of like wasps. Actually, those. Okay. Yeah. Yellow jackets. Yeah. I not like you could actually I mean, you say don't provoke them, but welcome to America. Um, but still, really stealing their car, that's getting their attention. And then stealing their car twice. <laughs> I bet he was actually going, wait a minute, they did they didn't. Like at that point, you're just being a dick. <laughs> Well, you know what? At that, you know, if he actually saw another car with the, 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 still the keys in it, still running, unlocked, he was like, "Well, I guess they want me to." They don't want you to. They, they well, no, no, no. Uh, let's move on. All right, we we've had stories, sadly, from the past year about different areas during the pandemic spending their their funds in unpleasant and stupid ways um this i think this is the the stupidest use of relief funds in the entire fucking pandemic i can i can understand the fucking lamborghinis and shit you're stealing that makes sense this does not make any fucking well they think it makes sense and doesn't make sense Jap Japan Town builds giant squid statue with relief money. Okay. Seaside Town in Japan has raised eyebrows after it used funding from an emergency uh, malware relief grant to build a giant statue of a squid. The 43 foot long uh, sea creature lies in the port of Noto, where flying squid is the town's delicacy. Reportedly used two hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars and two hundred twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars for the uh, the emergency funding to build the statue. 
Officials told the local media it is uh, part of a long term plan to lure tourists back after the pandemic. You know, I want to be skeptical about that, except that there's like a giant bean in Chicago that everybody flocks to. Except it's not a bean. It looks like a bean. Because right. When and it's... I'm from Long Island, where people will drive for an hour to see a giant building shaped like a duck that's voiced by Christy Brinkley. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So I want to be skeptical, but people will go see dumb shit. Not not that many. I mean, $228,500. Yeah. That's a lot of money to spend on a giant squid. Um, I mean, maybe they're trying to placate Cthulhu. It can't fucking hurt, man. We got, like... We've been through some shit. Maybe they're just trying to placate the Elder Gods. <laughs> you say placate the Elder Gods. I'm saying somebody in that town council has a bunch of them uh, booby am aminés. No, the tentacles aren't that long. It's 40... If this were some hentai shit, the it's... tentacles would be a lot longer. It's 43 feet long, Tara. Yeah, but I'm talking like proportional. Because <laughs> uh... my limited experience with hentai, those tentacles are like football fields long. Is it a robot squid? Now, you know what? They're, they're wrapped around like three different girls. I, you know what? If they actually made a transformer out of the goddamn thing, I wouldn't be able to fault them for it because fuck, they made a transformer. But no, it's just, it's a <laughs> giant fucking squid. Just a big old squid with a big creepy eye. That's how we're going to revitalize our town. The giant goddamn squid. Really? Yeah, I mean, you could have renovated some stuff. You could have boosted local restaurants that are having trouble. I feel like th there's a there's a town councilman who has a cousin who makes giant squid statues. <laughs> Just what I'm thinking. That's a niche business model. Very niche, but you know. What all do you have do, Tom? I make giant squid sculptures. All you have to do is Frozen sell industry. one. True. If, if it's $228,000, all you gotta do is sell one. Uh, well, we, we have, of course, more shenanigans with the stimulus loans. Last year's, th that whole stimulus loan legislation they just threw out there that nobody made any planning into and just... It's not gone quite so well. Um... And this dude kind of, like, took it way too fucking far. Man accused of... Uh, where is it? Oh, stupid. Thing. There it is. Boom. Man accused of lying to secure stimulus loan will plead guilty. Massachusetts man who allegedly... Who authorities allege faked suicide to evade prosecution on charges that he lied to secure federal stimulus loan agreed this week to plead guilty to conspiring to commit bank fraud. David Stanley, 53, of Andover, on Thursday, agreed in a plea agreement filed in U.S. District Court to admit to two of the seven counts he faces conspiracy and failure to appear in court. In exchange for... Well, you know, he was dead at the time. Exchange federal prosecutors will dismiss counts of bank fraud, making false statements, and aggravated identity theft. Carries a mandatory minimum sentence of two years in prison. Now, What? If he's getting to walk on this shit, I'm be like, what? Uh, last May, Stanley and David uh, Butzinger, 52, of Warwick, uh, became the first people in the nation to be charged with defrauding the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Um, they were listed as the owners of the former Remington House restaurant and were charged with conspiring to make false statements to secure more than $500,000 in forgivable business loans for conspiring bank fraud. Daly was later indicted on three counts of bank fraud and one count each of conspiracy to commit bank fraud. Um, prosecutors alleged at the time of their arrest, the men applied for loans for businesses that weren't operating prior to the onset of the pandemic. 
Um, it, it doesn't get into the de- where, where are the details about how he, he where is it? Um, authorities say they recovered Safely's vehicle with the stores unlocked and a key in the ignition uh, in June near a beach in Quincy, Massachusetts. His wallet with credit cards were in the vehicle, along with a typed and signed suicide note. Oh, so he's pretending he jumped into the sea. Uh huh. Investigators eventually located him in Georgia in a minivan with California plates. At the time, he was in possession of multiple forms of identification and ID badges bearing different names. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You faked your death to avoid charges on half a million dollars. Not It's a lot, but that's not a lot in terms of crime. And then... You went to Georgia. That was your big getaway? Fucking Georgia. If you're going to fake your death, you want to leave the country. Barbados is where you want to go. Non-extradition. Non-extradition. You, you, you Are want, your favorite words. Somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah. Because that, that's actually, got the nice climate. I actually dated a guy who had an elaborate plan on how he would fake his own death if he ever needed to. What? And apparently the key is going to Haiti. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you need it plan for that, but he had one just in case. No, but I mean, Georgia and Eastern Europe, maybe. No, not that Georgia. He went to the other Georgia. The Atlanta, Georgia type. Yeah, you definitely want to get the fuck out of the country. Now, that's going to be harder to do when you fake your death because, you know, You're it's dead. hard to fly on that passport. You, you could probably get a boat, maybe. So it's going to it's going to up the difficulty a little. Why the fucking to Georgia? Fake my death and go to Georgia. What the f- because luck favors the prepared, I make body disposal plans. Will you concern me a little, loverly low? <sighs> uh, well, but I hope that works out for you. Well, next up, we have uh, one of those... The length someone went to for a very stupid, stupid crime. It's it's kind of this is this is almost pathological. And it's from the fucking Washington Post. So this is one of those where, you know, you got somebody's attention on this one. Teen accused of rigging vote to become homecoming queen will be tried as an adult. On the day she was crowned homecoming queen, Emily Grover wore a sparkly silver dress, a bouquet of roses rested in the crook of her arm, and a crown adorned her curled blonde hair. Then the achievement crashed down around her. Prosecutors accused her and her mother, an assistant principal in the same school district, of casting hundreds of illicit votes to rig the election. Grover was expelled from a high school, and her mother, Laura Carroll, was suspended from her job. Uh, prosecutors have moved to try Grover as an adult. Um, Grover was 17 when he was charged with felonies in March, but turned 18 last month. Uh, the case was transferred to adult court. Um, they was a judge to choose whether to impose adult or juvenile sanctions. Um, I'm sorry, rigging the homecoming vote is a felony? It is when you hack the school system oh. to obtain private information. This carry reboot sucks. <laughs> Days after Grover was elected to Tate High School's homecoming queen, uh, the Escambia County School District contacted law enforcement to report unauthorized access to student, to student accounts. Hundreds of votes have been flagged as suspicious, including 117 that came from the same IP address. Carol 50, that's a dis, uh, assistant fucking vice principal, assistant principal, and Grover were soon suspected of involvement in her role at Bellevue Elementary School. Carol has brought Asterix to the as- access to the district's student identification software. Um, 
Election Runner, an application used to count votes, said it had received an ethics complaint alleging that Grover had used her mother's account to cast fake votes for herself. Um, school board members confronted Carol with the allegations. She uh, responded that she had given her daughter access to her student information account in the past. Grover gave her own version of the events. I have had access to my mother's account. My mother knows nothing about this. This is in the past. Um, I, Here's the thing. Yeah. When you're in high school, high school shit seems really fucking important. Yeah. You put a gun to my head, I couldn't tell you who homecoming queen or king was any of my four years of high school. Me either. I have no fucking idea. I don't know. I don't remember. It wasn't me because I wasn't fucking popular. Yeah. But like, this is this is definitely one of those chicks that is peaked in high school. And if she doesn't go to prison, she's going to wind up running like a pyramid scheme and call herself a boss babe. High, like high school means Tara, fuck Tara, all. Tara, multi level marketing. Multi level marketing, please. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, it's going to suck while you're there. It just is. And I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter but in the get, long run. To get your mom in on it. You an don't need to commit felonies fucking for principal. popularity. You're an assistant fucking principal. What the fuck are you doing letting your kid into the fucking secured fucking. What the fuck? Your kid don't need to get in there. You fucking idiot. I didn't realize they did that voting online now. We had paper ballots, but I'm from the fucking Jurassic period, so. 117 votes from the same IP address. This is the election fraud that we should be looking into. <laughs> we have homecoming voter fraud. We do. This, you... You're going to jail because of fucking homecoming. It's like, homecoming. You can't even put that on a fucking resume. No, nobody's going to care. The second you graduate, everything you did in high school immediately ceases to matter. Like, you know how once you drive a brand new car off the lot, the value drops 20%. The second you walk out of high school graduation, high school's value drops 100%. Like, maybe if you do stuff like uh, Model UN or some shit like that, that you might actually sure. want to put that on on something people know about. But homecoming, nobody gives a fuck about homecoming queen. Yeah. Nobody gives a and fuck. And I, I did a fuck ton of extracurricular, uh, extracurriculars in high school. Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. No. Yes, those things help you get into college. But once you get to college, nobody gives nobody a Nobody gives a shit. Uh, speaking of things you should just let go, um, this next one comes from Minnesota and you know what I have, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm just going to say it. I have exes that uh, on, on some rare dark nights, I've wished them dead. We all have it's just like, yeah, not how I would handle it. If this were the situation, however. Minnesota woman drives SUV through ex-boyfriend's burial service. <laughs> Minnesota woman who was told not to come to her ex-boyfriend's funeral was charged Monday after witnesses said she drove through the cemetery and tried to run over mourners during the ceremony. Blair Whitten. He's dead. You won. <laughs> Blair Witten, 28, was charged with reckless endangerment following the incident at Riverside Cemetery in Fargo, North Dakota. She went, she was in Minnesota and she went all the way to North Dakota to fuck up his funeral. That's I've impressive. Never, I've never been that mad at Max. Um, multiple complaints reported Witten was driving her vehicle inside the cemetery in a manner with extreme indifference for human life created substantial risk of bodily injury to persons in the cemetery. No one was injured. Witnesses waved down police at the cemetery and said that an SUV was driving over grave sites and trying to run people over. She got the face tat and the neck tat. The mugshot. Yeah, that's 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 one of those. Yeah. Those are choices. 
And neither of them are, look any good. Like, the picture's blurry, but... Like, you know what? If one of my exes actually was dead, I'd be like, oh, man, that fucking sucks. That shit. That's not cool. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, okay, let's go fuck up that funeral. Time to murder everybody who loved them. One last time, we're getting your fucking throw down. And it's like you Why? said. It's like you said. She won. You won. When they're dead, you win. It's over. Like, th the best thing you can do in life is live a long time. Because eventually, everyone you hate will die. Yeah. If you live long enough. The longer you live, the more you win. <laughs> That's how it works. If you're really lucky, you get a hot nurse to wipe your ass for you. You don't drive over. <laughs> don't wait, you fucking drive it over other people's gravestones. Why are you bringing their asses into it? This is for how you, you get haunted. Yeah. Oh, you're haunted as fuck now. You are bringing a whole bunch of ghosts back to Minnesota, and you know what? I bet they don't even like Minnesota. I've never been to Minnesota. I like Minnesota. Minnesota's nice. I hear it's cold. Well, you know, it, it just strikes me the kind of people who die in North Dakota are not the kind of people who want to be dead in Minnesota. Okay. It's so, here's, the, here's something Dan makes fun of me for a lot. Was that? I am totally a stereotypical coastal elite. Okay. Because I'm from Long Island, and until last year, I never didn't live in the New York metro area. So I legit have trouble internalizing that places like Minnesota are real. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just forget that, like, Wyoming is a real place with real people in it. <laughs> that it fucking exists. Uh, it I have, and I know the comments are going to come for me, and I know it's wrong. You do this I on purpose. Fucking, I swear to God. I'm a fucking coastal elite. Like, everything right. south of Philadelphia is the fucking south. Minnesota is, um, they've got a few nice cities, kind of well populated, more or less fairly polite, relatively blue state. North Dakota, sparsely populated. Very red, deliberately red. Just they, they, the only reason there is a North and South Dakota was to give Republicans a two extra senators. Um, it's it's the, the kind of place you go and you buy 20 acres of land for five dollars and you build a cabin and you fill it with guns. And she's bringing all so those ghosts back to Minnesota. My, not my kind of place. She's bringing all those ghosts back to Minnesota. Nobody's happy about that. They don't want to be in Minnesota. Yeah. They don't, don't want them in Minnesota. Because, you know, you're dead and you can't shoot a gun. That's got to be really annoying for them. <laughs> I don't think that's the most annoying part about being dead, unless you're like Wayne LaPierre. <laughs> or Lauren Boebert. <sighs> Final one tonight, and this is just... I want to point out that the, the Wyoming has nipple problems. What does that mean? I have never heard the term nipple problems before in my life. <laughs> Did you Ranger Scott Sand says Wyoming has nipple problems. Okay. Uh, I don't know. The last, the most surprising thing about this final story is alcohol was not involved. Huh. This is just sheer 100% all natural organic stupidity. Ooh. Does it come from the stupid region of France? No, because otherwise from... it's just sparkling assholery. <laughs> <laughs> Students rescued from sea near Isla of Isla Vista aboard homemade boat. That is that, what they call a homemade boat. boat. That's not a boat. 
That's a very large beer pong table. <laughs> Two mariners with questionable nautical sense were saved at the ocean near Illa Vista uh, early Saturday aboard their homemade boat constructed from buckets and kiddie pools. The male non-engineering students, I love how they stress non-engineering students, in their early 20s crafted a makeshift boat from 20 Home Depot buckets, two plastic kiddie pools, plywood, and duct tape. Of course, duct tape. Not even, not even flex tape. Okay? If it had been flex tape, I would have been like, okay, I can understand that. Because the dude like the in the American commercial flag should honestly, instead of red and white stripes, it should be like red and duct tape stripes. I want to point out, you know, it's hilarious. Look at that bucket on the front. Look at the, the bucket they put at the very front of the boat. Oh, it's got a flag. It's got the boat has an American flag on it, but on a bucket. Which, so would that, that was the top. That's the, the kiddie pool part wasn't the top? That it seems like it should be, but no. How did you how did you sit on that? I don't know. Maybe it was? I don't understand. I, I the, the the entire boat is is just is confusing me. Yeah. Um They had a paddle, but lacked wetsuits for the voyage in the ocean where seas were calm, but water temperatures were near uh, approximately 55 degrees. The tide kept pushing them further and further from shore, approximately 300 yards before county fire was summoned. Notified at approximately 2 a.m., which you're already cranky when somebody has to call your ass out at 2 a.m. County fire dispatch water rescue teams. Uh, two personal watercraft were launched near uh, UCSB campus point. Firefighters made contact with the wayward mariners about 30 minutes later. Brought the pair safely to shore with no injuries. Um... Wouldn't what? you test this on like a lake? Wouldn't you just not do this? But if you're gonna be a moron and do this, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not the ocean for the first test run. You've already pointed out they're morons. Yeah, true. They're they're fucking morons. They had a she it's a sheet of that's it's not that's not even oh my god that's not even plywood. Tara, that's not plywood. It's like particle board. That's fucking MDF. That's fucking particle board. That's fiber that's board. It's going to fall apart once it gets wet enough. Oh my God. It's just going to crumble. You know what particle board is? Particle board is when they take a shit ton of sawdust and compress it and compress it and compress it and compress it and compress it, and compress it until it's bored. With glue. It's held together right. with glue. You get that wet enough, and all that sawdust is going to go... They caulked, they caulked the buckets to the board. <laughs> Why? Okay, I'm looking at right there, what I'm looking at right there, that's at least $200 worth of materials and, and, and stuff. And to, for what? For what? <laughs> You know what you could do with $200? Maybe rent a real boat for the day. You could buy a dinghy. Fucking inflatable fucking raft. 200 bucks. Like at least that's fucking... made to be on water. But no, they thought, hey guys, let's... and then they weren't on anything. That's, <laughs> that's what really fucking, if they were drunk, if they were really fucking stoned, Maybe this would kind of make sense. But no, they were all natural. They were straight edge stupid. They just did this. And like you're in Santa Barbara. It's not like there's nothing else to do. <laughs> it's not like you're in Antarctica. Where you've already counted all the penguins. Like there's shit to do. They're they're fucking lucky to be alive. Yeah. That thing was they were 300, 300 yards from shore, probably going out further. That that thing was eventually going to self-destruct. Yeah. They are lucky that two at 2 a.m. someone even saw their asses. Jesus H. Christ. 
just this just how I have n I can't imagine being that stupid without drugs. That's what's killing me here. That's amazing. I mean, you've got a hell of a beer pong table now. <laughs> I suppose that'd be too easy a game, though. Unless you're playing with, like, a volleyball. The cock and the, the duct tape are just fucking killing me here. Like, it doesn't even, like, they just kind of half-ass wrap the duct tape around. <laughs> like, we didn't even do a figure eight through or anything. <laughs> This is this is shameful. How stupid this, this is. This wouldn't even pass. Did you ever have to do the thing in school where you had to make like something to hold an egg out of paper so that yeah. if it got pushed off the table, the egg wouldn't break? Yeah, we all had to do I that. I do school. that in college, except we weren't allowed to use any adhesive of any kind. Like we had to do it all with folding. This wouldn't even pass that. You'd break the fucking egg. Uh, Lady Mean Shao, the, the cock in the duct tape is, sounds like the weirdest she shanty ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. This is, this is the story when Hemingway just really got into the booze. <laughs> and that paddle. Just on Key West, drunk off his ass. That's a real paddle, which means they, they know what a boat, they went to a sporting goods area. Like you've seen a boat before. Be it a Walmart or whatever, but they were they went someplace where they could get a real paddle. A paddle. One paddle for two people, yeah. As... <laughs> this this was these were two people that were trying their damnedest to remove themselves from the gene pool and just couldn't couldn't get it right. Well, like look at the big picture. There are giant screws coming up because it looks like they screwed on the kiddie pools. What? What? L l so, why? Look at the bigger picture. All around the buckets, there's like three inch screws just sticking out exposed. Because what you really want to be in the ocean is bleeding. They bolted the kit. They bolted the. You definitely want to be on something that's slippery <laughs> in the middle of the ocean with three-inch screws protruding from it. They bolted the kitty. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They are lucky to be alive. Oh, my God. Mike is actually doing the math of how much this cost. Oh, Christ. How much did it cost, Mike? Michael. Michael. All right. How much did it cost, Michael? Because this fucking bolted it in the kiddie pools and the buckets and the, oh my god. And they screwed them up. They yeah. did. It's like an onion of stupidity. That's right. Like if that's the top of the boat, bolt downwards so you don't have three inches of exposed screw on which to shred your leg open. I don't understand how this boat works. I don't know if y'all know this. Sharks are attracted to the scent of blood. You know what? It seems to me you're right that it should go the other way, but then there's that flag on the front. Right. Like, logically, it seems to me like you'd want to be sitting in the kiddie pool. Because otherwise, how does... It, I guess you'd have to stand in the buckets. And this is This is not a cheap amount of... You could have taken that money and done $300 if you were that bored. And there were things you could do. And I know a bunch of shit is closed, but there was still stuff you could do for 300 bucks. There's still shit you could do. You could probably get a shitty surfboard. Valkyrie's like stampeding yeah, around out in the hallway. Going on. She's, going oh. she's having a great old time. I You're guess... stampeding and chirping. I guess the first thing we learned this week is if, if you're going to make a boat, at least know what a book boat looks like yeah. first. Look up the word boat yeah. on Google first. Like <laughs> that's that's not a fucking 
One of the saddest goddamn things I've ever seen. They made a better raft than that on Lost with like airplane parts and bamboo. That's like, you know what? If you were trying to escape a deserted island, I wouldn't fault you for that shit. Right. If that's what you had. But you went into Home Depot and you grabbed this shit. These are the things that you chose. Um, we've learned that if you if you lived and they didn't, you won. Yeah. The Game end. Over, done. Let it go. Um, we've learned that after high school, being the homecoming queen is worth exactly fuck all. So maybe committing a felony for that title is kind of fucking stupid. Also, worth, worth fuck all is uh, being the quarterback, unless you're getting a scholarship. Right. And then even after that, nobody cares about it. Once you're out of college, nobody gives a shit about football. Unless, you know, are you in the NFL? You're one of those rare few? No, nobody gives a fuck. No, shit. nobody cares. Um, no, you head cheerleader. Nobody, 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 debate club. <laughs> nobody gives a shit. Um, we've learned that if you are going to fake your death to get away with the money, your getaway destination probably shouldn't be the state of fucking Georgia. Yeah, if you're gonna steal half a million dollars, you should have some plans. Yeah. That, that involve overseas. Yeah. Cayman Island accounts, maybe. Um, we've learned that in the time of pandemic, maybe a, a giant squid is not the best investment for, for a community. I mean, while it might be good for morale. I'm just, I'm kind of glad that it make a giant schoolgirl to go with it. And finally, we've learned if, if, if the suspect manages to steal two police cars in a single day, that's on your ass. Yeah. He should get a gimme on that second one. Let's be perfectly honest. I mean, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, no, I think fair's fair. But charging him with possession of your weapons because your dumbass has left the car unlocked, that's, that's on you. That's 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 petty. Freaking good lord. I don't know. The boat the boat is still fucking killing me. The fucking boat that is fucking, boat is horrifying. That is boaty kill me. 